Okay, time to check out and time to go. It's kind of make me sad, but I like this place. Today is my last day, so I already booked bus from here to Hoi An. I skipped Danang because I didn't have much time. Uh, I gotta be in Singapore on the 23rd, so my time's kind of running out so fast. That's why it always happens when you're enjoying it. Uh, I guess this is downfall of being a traveler. You know, sometimes you have to push yourself and, you know, go out there and move, make a move. <laughs> So yeah, uh, I still have four hours. My bus is at 1 p.m. So I have to be back at the hostel at 12.30 at least. I'm heading to one of these pagoda and the Imperial City. So both of those sightseeings are, you know, located on the other side of the Purkum River. So I'm gonna walk across the bridge. Uh, this famous bridge uh, at night is so beautiful. You know, the illuminating light, uh, changing colors all the time. So we're gonna walk from this point across to over there. It's quite a long bridge. It's really, really long. Reminds me of Mandalay Palace in Burma back in 2018 when I went for a visit. It looks similar like this. Look. I'm surrounded by the canals with lotus. Look how big it is. It's bigger than my body. <laughs> Gosh. Alright, we don't have much time. Let's go on, get a ticket and get in there, explore and go back. <laughs> Just to see get to the dinner. 200 for one person. I can stay as long as I want, right? In better city. Okay, I'll go for one. Yeah, I got a ticket. Oh, wow. Well, I mean, the area is large, but the building itself, the palace itself, is just that. Huh. And a ticket costs 200,000 dong. Oops, sorry. Um, and a ticket costs 200,000 dong, which is about more than $10. Not too bad. Okay, let's get in there. Quite beautiful though.
So I got this. I have to down. Oh, just put it in there. Okay, thank you. So insert the card. Yeah. What happened? Sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, so if the machine is broken, <laughs> thank you, thank you. Thanks. Well, that's quite expected. The machine was broken. <laughs> the guy was so nice, though. Okay. So. Okay. Yay, on it. Way up. <laughs> I thought I was lost. Okay, let's take a tour. Start on this big bell. Wow, that's it. Uh, oh, sorry, sorry guys. It's a lot larger than this. This is the main building, I think. And you know, behind over there, those are all the the real palace. Oh, thank goodness. <laughs> I was like, that's it. This is it. No. Go down and go to the palace. Oh, that's very interesting. So the tour group is blocking the stairway down to the palace. So I'm gonna go another way. Oh. I gotta love this gate. The Imperial City, or known as Hua Citadel, located just 3 kilometers away from Hua's downtown center. This beautiful complex served as the capital of Dongyuan Dynasty from 1802 to 1945. This site comprises a lot of cultural monuments, including palaces, temples, and tombs. Hua Imperial City was one of the most important political centers of Vietnam and was once an enormous complex full of all the executive and bureaucracy you would expect from a country's capital. The Emperor Jia Long had created what we know today as modern Vietnam and the Dongyuan Dynasty, which 
would be the last of the dynasty in the country. This complex was the place where 13 Dongyuan Dynasty emperors chose to live and govern the country. To be accurate, in 1803, the Emperor Jielong himself examined the terrain to choose a suitable place to build this massive palace. In fact, it took 31 years to complete from 1802 to 1833. Besides the emperor plan, the architectural system in accordance with the wealth proportion principle. So surrounding the palace, there is a total of 10 gates and a 7 km long moat for both decoration and protection. No photos allowed inside. Sorry. Okay, let's go to the next one. <laughs> it's, it's so big, you know. Uh, one after another, one after another, like further down there. Oh, I kind of feel sad that I can't take video inside. It's such beautiful. Look at this. Well, I think I gotta go back because I don't have much time. It's too large. I think I've only uh, explored half of it, but it's still a lot to see. Um, but the thing is that they look almost the same, you know, it's different buildings, but look pretty similar in terms of the structure and, you know, interior. So I just snapped photos of the lovely couple. I don't think they're a couple, maybe they're just friends, you know. Uh, putting on the outfit and taking photos. I don't know. They're so lovely like beautiful smile uh, And they said welcome to Vietnam. I wish I could have recorded You gotta love this lamp Beautiful lantern. So I just had, <laughs> I just had to take grab because it's too far. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I decided to take this grab because it's too far. I'm gonna visit the Tianmu Pagoda, so that's gonna be my last visit for today. I mean, I gotta see it, right? So. <laughs> as I'm leaving soon, so anyhow. Yay! Thank you. <laughs> it's very good, nice service. All right. <laughs> uh, get a fully? Yep. Let's cruise around. So my grab guy is waiting for me here and he's gonna charge another 50 uh, 
thousand from here to go back to my hostel, which is very affordable. Thank, thank to him, he's so nice. Let's go explore this Dakota. Uh, probably one of the best way to come here or to get back to town is by this boat, but um, I'm sure it's more expensive. So having crab is, is better. <laughs> Quite a lot of people. And this is the pagoda. Oh, you can't even get in there. <laughs> I didn't know that. Let's take a walk around a little bit. It's beautiful, Pagoda. Tianmu Pagoda is one of the oldest monuments in Hawaii. Located in the north bank of the Perfum River or about 5 kilometers away from the center, the pagoda was built in 1601 by the Emperor Huang during the reign of Dongyan Dynasty. Upon hearing the story from the local people about the old lady who appeared on the hill where pagoda stands today, telling local people that a lord would come and build a Buddhist temple for the country's prosperity. So the Emperor Huang named the construction of the pagoda Tianmu or Heavenly Fairy Lady. First, the temple was in a very simple form of construction, but as the time went by, it has been redeveloped and expanded with more intricate features. And the pagoda was also restored several times throughout Dongyan Dynasty era. The temple is also a place where they buried the monk named Thich Quang Duc, who died from setting himself on fire at a busy street of Saigon on June 11, 1963, when him and his fellow monks were protesting the persecution of Buddhists by the South Vietnamese government led by Ngo Dinh Giam, a staunch Roman Catholic. You know what, I much prefer the pagoda over the palace. I mean, I'm such a temple geek. <laughs> I stay much longer here in pagoda than the palace, even though it's very small, much smaller than the uh, imperial city. I uh, just saw monks chanting, it was really peaceful. You know, every time when it comes to the temple and hear the sound of the bell and the monks, I kind of feel peace inside, you know. Uh, I feel like home. <laughs>